All right, so this is the kit you can order on Amazon. These are the instructions that it comes with. You get three lenses and a clip to mount it to your phone. They show you the wide angle here before and after, how it clips on the phone. It shows you 50% more scene. That's the 120 degree angle lens. Then there's the ultra wide 198 degree fisheye. It shows you and they show you the macro lens, which is why I bought this kit. So it enables you to crop in on stuff up close. And I'll show you that in a series of segments next. Here's what they tell you to do. Keep the lens caps on, keep the lens clean. Here's the actual kit. You see the lenses. This is the one I was interested in. This is the 20X macro. This is the 120 degree wide angle. I didn't test that one. And then that is the 190 degree angle fish eye. There's the clip. That's what you mount, mount it to over the back camera on your phone. And then they even include this soft felt bag if you want to carry your lenses around like that as a kit. Here's the 20X macro on a Bodery 21 Joule automatic self-winding mechanical watch with 72 hours of power reserve. This unit is made of titanium and has a sapphire window front and back, though they didn't write that on the unit. It is in the manufacturer's description for the product. I haven't used the glass tester or mineral tester for hardness to determine the most hardness. I don't really care if it's mineral, crystal, or sapphire. I mean, obviously sapphire is better. Here we see the back of the movement. If we move it, the, the weight swings very easily, and that is the automatic winding movement. So what happens is, as that weight swings around, it is connected to the mainspring via a gear, and it winds up the mainspring to store the kinetic rotational energy as potential kinetic energy in the spring. And that fancy looking oscillating thing at the bottom there called the escape wheel and the escapement um, is the regulator mechanism. And what that is doing is it's regulating the time precision or the rate at which the spring can unwind. I'm going to look at this up close again from a different angle. You can see the second hand ticking along there and the pallet fork with the escape wheel there in the middle. And that's the main spring mostly unwound towards the top. So it hasn't been wound up. Now I'm going to wind this. Sorry for the shaky video. I'm doing this just one handed on a squishy surface. You can hear me winding the movement clockwise. So my thumb there is pushing stem in the clockwise direction. I'm rolling my thumb across it. And if you watch the mainspring there, you can see it winding up on itself. So this is um, my kinetic um, muscular input energy from my thumb through my arm and my torso is pushing the stem in a rotational direction. And through a linkage and gear, that actually also winds the mainspring. Now, if we flip it over we can see on the back, actually this will take just a second because the weight gets in the way. So I'm going to move it around here. We're going we're gonna to show almost. Here, let me move the watch. There. Now, there you can see it. You can see that as my thumb goes across the stem, that transfer of energy is occurring and if you look carefully there you can see the cassette for the mainspring which has three holes cut in it. See this is the stem I'm talking about. There's my thumb testing the macro lens. Pretty good. You can see very with very good detail up close you can see you can even read the small text there BDA001T. It, it, um, it allows you to get real close. You need nice bright lighting if you're going to do that, but it allows you to zoom in real close. In fact, if you pull out too far, the phone can't focus. So this is really meant for up-close macro photography. 
and here have a look at the escape wheel. You can see that purple thing on the top is a jeweled capstone bearing. So there's a jewel made of synthetic sapphire, pink sapphire. It's a sleeve bearing holding onto the shaft that's connected to that wheel. And then on top of that one, there's a cap stone or another synthetic sapphire that holds the end of the metal pivot so that it can't move up or down. And this is typically done on the escapement because the precision of this part of the mechanical wristwatch is what determines the accuracy of the time um, as elapsed. So the more precise this regulator is and the lower the friction in the gear train, which is why they use jeweled movements, um, the more precise the second can be delineated and that means it gains or loses less time uh, relative to the actual elapsed time. And again, you can see that uh, roughly six steps per second uh, automatic movement there. The main spring's pretty wound up. Here's, um, if we just look at it with the, the phone kind of zoomed in without the macro lens, the, the picture's a little sharper. Look at, that, look at that contrast when I get rid of the glare off the front glass. You can really see there's the, the light inside the phone. So this is the, it's, it's hitting, it's right next to the camera and it's shooting out light. So now we're front lighting it and you can see some glare happening, some, what they call blowout. There it, it kills the detail, blown out. Um, but if we're careful to move that glare out of the way, we can see with great detail the gear train, the escapement, and this gives you a nice crisp view of what this watch looks like in first person. Boom! We're going outside. This is the 198 degree wide angle fish eye lens and we can see it's non-anamorphic. We've got some serious uh, edge blurring going on. Um, it does produce a very interesting optical effect. I'm just walking along the perimeter of the apartment complex we live in here, uh, showing the sports arena, which is in the adjacent property. And there's a ecological offset restoration zone between there, which is depicted in that sign describing the wetland. Um, and that's effectively the lawn border of the apartment complex. And as we move along here, um, some foreground trees produce that rapid motion effect. They're very close to the phone camera with the Clipon lens assembly. And uh, we can see that it just, it really pulls in a humongous visual area that the phone would normally not capture from this angle. So a horizontal pan like this actually you know, displays the image more the way that your actual eyes would see it. Now, I don't have a gimbal. I'm just walking with the phone in my hand with this lens clipped on. Uh, sorry about the motion blur and jitter of the image. Effectively, I'm just testing this product here and posting a video. Um, this isn't really a review because I've never tested anything else like this. Again, I was just looking for a macro lens I could clip onto my phone. I use my iPhone SE 2020 as a camera primarily, and uh, that's the basis of my YouTube channel. I have a phone and an idea, so I record. This is effectively B-roll. I didn't really edit this. I just took it off my phone and used iMovie to smash the clips together uh, and add this commentary. So thanks for watching. Peace be with you. You guys take care and stay safe out there. Bye-bye.